Hey guys, welcome to the Max. Today's video is going to be a good one. We've been talking about it for the last few videos. We've talked hygiene, food, other survival things, off grid. Now let's talk about medical supplies. Now this goes way over my head, and we're going to be talking about a lot of items here. But uh, Miss Mac is the professional when it comes to this stuff. She's a registered nurse by trade. So she knows a lot more than I do, and I'm depending on her to go over all this stuff. I do want to show y'all some basic things that we have in our medical kit. You can get and use at home if emergency come up and you did not have access to medical supplies outside of the home. There are going to be five main topics that we're going to be talking about, and this is going to be beginner things for you guys to get and put back in a kit, and it starts right now. The first thing I wanna to talk to y'all about is controlling bleeding. Here are some things that we have in our kit. The first is gonna be a tourniquet. So this might be something that you were looking at if you were dealing with major hemorrhaging um, and you needed to stop a severe bleed, a tourniquet is definitely gonna be one of your go-tos to get that under control. I would recommend keeping on hand is wound seal or quick clot. Now these are things again that you can buy over the counter that is going to help control bleeding and hemorrhaging that you want to get that under control. One of the main things with bleeding, obviously, you know, if you start bleeding out uncontrollably, within minutes, it can be life or death. You can get access to these and it will really help control that. Tourniquet, quick cot. Uh, we have several of these because obviously we have a big family. Wound seal, another instant, stop bleeding instantly for larger wounds. So this would definitely be something I would want to add to my emergency kit. On the same topic of controlling bleeding, typically when you're bleeding out, you have a open source that will cause you to bleed out. So with that comes wounds. So that would be my number two on the list is controlling infection with wound care. Now I have a few little handy dandy things in my hand that I just wanna show you. These are butterfly sutures. With butterfly sutures, I also have vet bond. It say this is equivalent to super glue. If you can get your hands on Dermabond, that is the most preferable choice. Vetbond and super glue is gonna do for my family. Butterfly closures, like I mentioned. Now, with these disposable skin staplers and the, and the removers, I also have in my kit, this is some numbing like lidocaine. Uh, it would be very, very incredibly painful to inject these without some something for numbing lidocaine does have to be per prescription so if you can get lidocaine on hand that is awesome it is not something that i have but this is like a lidocaine cream that you can put on and after a certain amount of time elapses, it will numb some of that tissue up and makes these a little bit more tolerable. Remember with wounds, infection control is a main thing. So what I have out here is, this is sterile saline and I also have some 100 cc syringes. This will be very important for irrigating wounds Typically when you get some type of wound, you have something that has punctured your skin to cause the opening. Many times, if you're out in the woods, you're working on the farm or whatever you may be doing, whatever punctures your skin is likely not clean. So if you have dirt or any type of debris in your wound, it is gonna be crucial that you get those things out. That is where the 100 cc syringes, even you can get 60 cc syringes, those are good to have on hand. Sterile saline, is awesome to have on hand. I also have some, let me find it, let me find it. The betadine iodine are another great things along with hydrogen peroxide and alcohol. The main point here that I'm trying to make is trying to maintain a sterile environment. It's not always possible, but cleaning wounds, clean wound irrigation, things like ABD pads that are gonna soak up fluids, self-adhesive wraps, or tape, you can tape these things on. Self adhesive wraps kind of eliminate the need for having tape, but they are a great thing to have on hand. That way you can 
clean those wounds, cover those up, to prevent infection. It's not something that's immediately life-threatening, but if your wound was to begin to get infected, you would have a serious problem on your hand, which leads me to my next point, having Jace Medical on hand. Now, you guys know that we don't love antibiotics, but if the need ever be, we have five antibiotics on hand. I'm not gonna read you all of those out just for the sake of time because I have so much to cover. But guys, if you don't have emergency antibiotics on hand and you find yourself in a situation with infected wounds or the list can just go on and on and on to where you need antibiotics, please check them out. There's tons and tons of information on their website. These also come down to a life or death situation in the sense of if you come in contact with bacteria and your wound gets infected it will not take very long to put you down so having emergency antibiotics on hand is a huge thing and when we talk about jace jace is a phenomenal company we are affiliated with them but please know there are other companies too what we're just trying to say is you need to make sure you have those antibiotics on hand to be able to utilize when things sometimes may allow you not to be able to go to the clinic or go to a doctor's office or a hospital. It's always good to have them just in case. We don't believe in taking tons of medicine. That's not something we preach at all. But by having those things, it's a game changer. Another thing I like to have on hand is these are something new that I have added to our stash, instant cold packs and instant hot packs. Cold is going to be to help keep inflammation and swelling down. These are going to help increase blood flow to wounds to help control with infection. Now, this is not a complete kit. So y'all please know there are lots and lots of things. The list can go on from under the sun. We just want to give you guys a basic understanding, control bleeding, which was our number one. Number two, wound care, infection control, some basic general ideas. I know I just dumped a whole lot on y'all. This is my betadine and iodine. If I want to put some in here and clean my wound, this is my squirt bottle. Finishing out number two, something to always be mindful of when you're trying to control infection. We talked about trying to maintain a clean and sterile envir environment. Having bleach on hand to maintain cleanliness. Also, hand soap, hand sanitizers. Please, before you start dealing with wounds, messing with wounds, Please try to get clean gloves on, clean your hands, clean gloves. If you can get sterile gloves in your kit, they are not cheap. They are much more expensive than regular gloves, but at least try to get some Germex soap, whatever, get your hands clean and get you some gloves on because infection control in wound care is a major thing. I think we're done with wound care, y'all, of just some of the basics that I'm sharing with y'all today. Next on my list, which is gonna be number three, these are random order, y'all, so don't get in a tizzy about the order. This is just number three that I'm going to discuss, is heating. Hypothermia is a real thing. Having something like an emergency blanket, having these instant hot packs in your stashes are a great thing to do. Fire starters, which I know Colby has talked to y'all a lot about. Heating is a major deal. Don't underestimate hypothermia. These are, of course, you can see this one is in our, our bug out slash camping bag and it has kind of gone through the, gone through the ringer, but it's in there. If we were to need it, reflects body heat back to the body. It's a great thing to have on hand. Y'all don't underestimate hypothermia. Make sure that you have fire starters and those types of things in your medical supply kit as well. If we've learned anything from the past, two years is that breathing is important, right? Airway and breathing is very important. The first thing I wanna show you that we have in our kit is respirators. We have two, actually two different types of respirators. We are not recommending any specific brand. We are just showing you the two type respirators we have along with the filters that go on the respirators. Now the thing with the respirators is they are gonna help the person who actually has the mask on any airborne contaminants that is going to filter out the air that you're actually breathing in. So this keeps the person safe who has the mask on. Here are some other things awesome to have on hand epinephrine inhalers. Now, this is something that I'm gonna to talk to you about that is a little bit more from the nursing side that may make you feel a little uncomfortable. And these are 
nasal airways. Call them OPAs. The great thing, I wanna open them up and just show you. The great thing about having these on hand, if there was any type of facial trauma and there was swelling, and let me tell you, it can happen sometimes. It, they're called emergencies for a reason, right? Say, like for example, we had a friend a few years ago who was attacked by a dog. The dog attacked his face. There was major injuries to his face. What you don't want to happen is for your airway to sustain so much swelling that it blocks off because death follows very quickly after that. So by having these on hand, this kit that I have actually comes with lubrication because it will make it go down a little bit more comfortably. The thing with these, just from the nursing perspective, if you have a huge person, you're gonna use the larger airway. If you have a smaller person, you wanna use the smaller person. That's pretty simple. But for any reason that the passageway is blocked, you can literally stick these up the nose and it will prevent that from being blocked off or being obstructed. This little thingy me bobber, if you ever go to the doctor and they say, let me borrow your finger, it's for this right here. So this is a pulks, what we call a pulk socks essentially measures the oxygen in your blood. It will rate your oxygen on a scale, 100 obviously being the best. Anything below 90 is not preferred. This will measure your oxygen in your blood. It's battery operated. It's really simple. It will also tell you somebody's heart rate. If you have someone who's complaining of having issues breathing and you want to know what their oxygen saturation is, or in other words, how much oxygen is in their blood if they're breathing well, you can put this on their finger and it will give you a scale of how much oxygen is getting in their blood. Nebulizer, this is something that we have that also goes along with our sterile saline. I also have food grade hydrogen peroxide in our kit. Now, this is something that does require studying on your own. I'm not advising you to dive off into this being uneducated. You do need to do your research. But this is something that we have on hand is a nebulizer sterile saline and food grade hydrogen peroxide just putting the information out there for you to do your own research this is an oxygen mask and we also have a portable oxygen tank so our tank is stored in another location this is the replacement i'm not dragging that tank down today but just know if you need oxygen that they do have these type things available you can go buy on amazon to put those in your emergency kits for medical airway respiratory you'll have it in your stash it's going to kind of be number five all in the pot type situation injuries dealing with injuries and issues that you can pretty much deal with over the counter snake bites bug bites wasp bites whatever that may be so this is great for pulling venom out of stings and the little suction does work really well on this and you can see i have been into it De definitely recommend this it's lightweight and great to have to suction that venom out any other type injury that you may sustain a break there are different type splints that you can get for that this is a tiny arm bar that I was able to keep from a hospital visit, but it will be great for splinting breaks on my littles, obviously not for us, but splints are a great thing to have in your kit. I have some finger splints, stuff like that for finger breaks, any type finger, finger injury where you would need to um, immobilize those. This is an arm sling that I have. If, if you were to get your arm in a pickle, I'm just kidding y'all, but in all seriousness, if you needed to keep your arm um, immobile and let it rest, this sling is, is something great to add to your kit. Burns along with the wounds. Burns was another great thing. I completely jumped over this. This is great for burns if you don't have this in your kit. Vomiting and diarrhea. So here are some things that I have in my kit. This is liquid. 
IV. My only issue with this is that if you are profusely vomiting, this would be not a great choice because you're gonna be vomiting. There are some other prescription medicines that I have saved that are topical solutions. In other words, you can put those on the skin. They're considered anti-emetics that would help you with vomiting. If you come in a situation where you get those and you use them, don't throw that type of stuff away. It does have a, sh a short shelf life. In other words, doesn't last for 10 years, but keep it for if you were to need it within that time frame. This is a good option to have liquid IV for rehydrating especially if you had something that caused diarrhea. Pedialyte is great to have on hand. We have a few, actually a few boxes and, and bottles of both of these. Easy, easy over, to, over the counter things, anti-diarrheas, um, things for nausea and vomiting. A, a lot of that can be taken care of naturally, but I challenge you to add those things because dehydration is a real thing and when you start throwing up or you have major diarrhea it can literally wipe you out very very quickly so make sure you have on some things on hand to control nausea vomiting and diarrhea as well we live close to a we fall within the danger zone of a nuclear plant i'm just going to tell you this is what i have on hand do your research on this find out how you need to use it it is something I'm glad I have in my kit. This was an absolute must potassium iodine in our kit. Again, do your research. I'm just telling you we have it in our kit. These are great. Again, going back to wound care, skin salves, infection control, triple antibiotic ointments, things that are gonna help you keep your wounds clean. So have bug spray. This is gonna be for anytime you're outside. Um, mosquito bites, all ticks, all that carries so many different types of diseases. So have some type of insect repellent in your medical supply kit because that will help you in the long run prevent diseases and things that can be transmitted through mosquitoes. Along the lines of over the counter is allergy relief. Antihistamine is a major thing. Benadryl, there are many different medications you can get almost you can get several things over the counter now that are antihistamine for emergency use if you start with anaphylactic reactions anything along those lines that you know you're having a reaction to histamine you need antihistamines to help you control that especially when your face throat and airways are involved you need to get those administered as soon as possible we have bees and we love bees but me and two of the kids swell up pretty good so antihistamines are good to have around here, here yes but they are good overall other over-the-counter things that i want to mention are antipyretics in other words fever reducers uh, fever can make you uncomfortable but fever that goes too high can cause seizures so you want to be mindful Fever in general is not a bad thing. I think it gets a really, really bad rap, a bad name. Fever in itself, again, is not a bad thing. It's indicating, telling us that our body is fighting infection and by actually having an increased temperature helps us fight off different um, bacterias and viruses. However, like I mentioned, when the fever gets 104 to 105, those things will definitely be calls for concern and you need to get those under control because you definitely don't want to have a seizure related to fever. Aspirin is another great thing to have on hand. Just remember children don't need aspirin, but it is good, something good to have on hand. Antifungal, um, monostat is a great thing to have on hand for women and it can actually be used for a whole host of things. Have some monostat on hand just in case. Um, again, it's over the counter. It's something very easily accessible that you can get. Something this goes along with my number five miscellaneous that sometimes people forget about. This is a wonderful thing to have on hand and this is a first aid OB kit. 
Now this is for whatever reason, you were on the side of the road, you're camping and whatever the case may be and you go into labor. This is a great little kit to have on hand. It has a number of things in here, many of which are sterile items to have on hand if you were having to aid in delivering a baby. So OB kit is a great thing to have on hand in your medical supply as well. Also wanna mention activated charcoal. Great for things like toxins, things that have been ingested, uh, poisons, those type things. This is a great thing to have on hand. Definitely wanna add this to your kit as well, especially if you have little ones and they like to put stuff in their mouth like I do. So here you see our supply that we have pretty much bought and put up for emergency. There are things that I've had to dig in and use, and that's okay. We're very thankful for modern medicine. Like I said, I am a nurse by profession, and I am very thankful for modern medicine when it is needed. However, I do love the things that God gave us. I'm not a crazy, um, <laughs> person who likes to worship the creation more than the creator, I, it is definitely vice versa for me. I'm so thankful for the things that God gave us. I love using herbs for medicinal purposes. There are a whole host. A lot of people have the, the idea that plants are only used for maybe one specific thing. Plants can be used for anxiety. They can be used for blood pressure. They can be used for cholesterol. They can be used for helping you sleep. They can be used for infection control. They can be used for a whole host of things. There are a number of things that are antiviral, antibacterial. Really, you just have to dive into your research. So having knowledge is going to be key here and especially if you're not a medical professional and you find yourself in a situation where you have all the supplies but you may not know what to do with the supplies have a manual on hand they make tons and tons of first aid manuals out there get those put those on top of your kits so that you can reference those especially if you're stressed out or you're upset because most emergencies are emergencies and you can quickly reference those and find out exactly what you need to do for that situation now there are a few other things i want to reference too that i was not able to hit in all this that i'm just going to quickly read a list of some things that i thought of off the top of my head that you may want to have in your in your kit a flashlight scissors squeezers a thermometer cold and flu medicines snake bite kits athlete's foot eye wash eye patches those are some extra things to consider along with things like eardrops anything that your family specifically may need your family's medical needs may look different than mine an epi pen is crucial here to us because we do have bees however uh, your family might not have any problems with allergies but an epi pen is another one of those huge things that if you had one of those on hand a lot of this could mean life or death situations by having just the smallest thing on hand like an epi pen so i challenge you definitely do your research get your manuals get your kits together because if we ever found ourselves in a situation where medical care was not easily accessible you have some things at home that you could treat and it would make your life a little bit more it won't be easy but a little bit more easier to deal with as missy said do your research make sure you understand whatever you're buying don't be crazy with it but also know it's good to have all this stuff on hand i'm not going to deliver a baby but it's good to have that well i guess i'm i hope we don't have to do that no. <laughs> But it's good to have this. We had this ready to go with a bug out situation. There's our bug out bag. It has abbreviated version of this. And this stuff we can throw in this box, get it going, get it in the vehicle if we ever had to. But it is great to have on hand. Missy knows all this stuff way better than me for sure. But she's gonna be working also on a herbal and essential video, uh, more of a natural approach to it. So look forward to that. If you are interested in that, let us know. Go down here and tell us, uh, we'd like to see that. I'd really like to know specifically what herbs or what category that you're interested in most so with all that being said we are not here to completely educate you we're just giving you guys some ideas and we hope that this will prove beneficial to you every family's need is different we just want to help you out get your wheels going and 
Happy homesteading and God bless y'all.